So today we will take a look at the new Cartesian sequencer from CV Funk. We have three axes we can scan through in different ways, and it's a really fun sequencer to experiment with. So let's start with the basic functionality. We have a grid of 16 steps, right? 4 over 4. We can choose also to quantize them to musical notes or not, and we have also range settings, which is quite helpful. Now in this case I will sequence hours from the same collection, so we have the output, in this case again this will be pitch, and we have the gates or triggers that will trigger in this case the envelope that I have here, because in the right click menu we can again choose between gates or triggers, I will go with triggers. And now we have multiple inputs that we can use to drive the different directions, right? So for example, I can drive the x-axis, right? I can choose to drive it forward, for example, with a multiplied by 4 clock. Right, and now I can change the steps. So let's say I will deactivate one of the gates here and then just choose a different note. Right, and we have this direction. I can use another clock to drive the y-axis, right, in this case I multiply it by 1. So now we get all the 16 steps, and again I can just remove some of the gates here, and change the notes, right, something like this maybe. Right, and we have a sequence. Now we have another plane, the Z plane, which will give us four more of these X and Y grids, right? So you can see we have four more copies, and this we can drive with the Z plane. Right, and we can even copy and paste the different sequences in the right click menu. For example, I can copy this layer, and then I can paste this to all the different layers, right, and then make adjustments, so for example, I can change the notes, I can add more notes just to have them a bit different from one another, right, maybe something like this, and another one, right, just change the notes, right, so now we have four different of these grids, each one is a bit different, and in this case I will use a divided by 4 clock to drive this plane, the Z plane. Right, so now we have 4 times these uh, 16 steps grids. I will add some delay to this. Now we also have the scan input, so here I have another voice, I have here kick all with the chorus distortion, right, this will be a sort of a bass. In this case I have it unquantized as you can see, and again I have the range settings, this will act as modulation to modulate the timbre of kick all. Right, and instead of using the X and Y, I will use the scan input, right, that we have here, opalach. Right, we have here, again, we can go forward or reverse, and this will basically scan through the X and Y, so again I will use a multiplied by 4 clock. Right, and I will use the same uh, divided by 4 clock to drive again the Z plane. So again, we can trigger the different directions and get all sorts of interesting um, rhythms and sequences. I have here another voice, again with another Aorus from the same collection, just with random notes. Of course, we can also use other trigger sources to drive the directions, for example, trigger sequences. Here I have, again, kick all, just going through some delay, and Cartesia is triggering it, sequencing its pitch, and also sequencing its timbre. 
And I have here the relatively new trigger sequencer from Sequencer, right, with eight different rows. So I can use, for example, one row to drive the X direction, right? So let's have something like this, for example. Right, so this will also add another um, rhythmic layer to everything. Another row to trigger the Y. So let's do something like this. Right, we can have two more rows to trigger the reverse here. So it will run in reverse, the X and the Y. And another row to trigger the Z. So it will also move between the different layers that I have here. Right, so we still get something a bit more uh, repetitive, but it changes according to the triggers from the sequencer. So of course we can use also multiple sequencers that have different lengths. Right, for example, here I have um, a setup with dark energy and palette. Right, I have two different voices and I'm using the gate output, so the main gate output to trigger dark energy and then the inverted output to trigger palette, and the inverted will basically give us the gates that are off, right? So we have two different sequences, right? Once for the main get gates, and once for the gates that are turned off, right? And I have here the trigger sequencer from count modular, so the first sequence will have eight steps, this can drive the X. And then another sequence with seven steps. This can drive the Y. All right, so now we get a bit more variation. And I have here another sequence with five steps to drive the Z. And we also have here the random button and input that will um, cause the sequence to jump to a random step on each one of the layers. All right, so if I click it, you can see it just jumps everywhere. So I can also trigger this with another sequence. All right, so in this case, we get a bit more variation and some randomness. I have here also a bass, uh, the phrase sequencer, sequencing the classic VCO. Also scan through the sequence with CV instead of triggering the directions. So here again I have arrows from the same collection. And I have three LFOs here from the quad LFO from Surge XT. So I have one sine wave and I can use this to scan. You can see here it says CV, right? So I can use this to scan through the X axis. Right, so it will basically take the shape of the sine wave and it will scan through the, through the sequence, in this case through the x-axis, but I can use another one, for example, a rising ramp to scan through the y. Right, and then another one, a triangle to scan through the z, and they are not synced or anything, they have different rates here. something pretty interesting. I have this going through Nimbus, which is a clouds clone, so it will granulize this sound. Just to add another layer. Now we can also scan um, or morph through the scan by using the scan input. Right here I have the FM operator again going through some delay. And I have here a smooth random voltage, again coming from the same quad LFO here from Surge XT. So I can use this to 
um, scan through the scan input basically. So it will scan through the 16 steps, but randomly moving forward or backward. Now what I've done here, I have just two gates or triggers on active, but it's still changing the values. In the right-click menu, there is the sample and hold option. The sample and hold, when I activate it, now the values will change only when it reaches the gates, right? So only on these two steps, we will get a different values. All the other values will be ignored because the gates are off. But if I turn this sample and hold mode off, I decouple the gates and the voltage, Right, so now the values will change and I can use the gates uh, separately. And what I will do, I will use them to trigger random voltage with the holder module here from secret cell. So now I have on these two gates always a random value that I will then use to modulate the minimum and maximum values. So I basically transpose the sequence or change the range of the sequence. So again, we get a bit more variation. Now there are also the address modules from Doc B. Here I have, for example, the, the P16, and you can see it creates a sequence of steps, basically, that will then scan through the sequence. If I take the patterns here all the way down, right, you can see basically now it will go from one to 16. Right, as you can see here, the voice that I have here is again kick all going through some delay. Maybe I will solo this for a second. Right, so you can see it creates steps in voltage that are basically scanning through the sequence, but again we have different patterns. Right, so instead of going from 1 to 16, if I go to 3 for example, you can see it creates all sorts of jumps. Right, and there are other patterns. And of course, this we can also modulate in sequence. So I have here the step sequencer from secret cell that I will use to change the patterns. So we have different patterns. Right, so again, it will scan through the sequence in different ways, in different directions. I have here also a bass drone with three VCO units, right, a chorus, filtering, delay. You can also use polyphony to merge all four Z sequences, all four layers into one polyphonic cable. Again, I have here the FM operator. Just like we've seen before, I'm using the P16 to scan through the sequence in a different, in a certain pattern. And I have four different layers set, right, with four different sequences, as you can see here. Right, so now I can merge all of them into a polyphonic cable with a polyphony here, right? I just take this up to four. And now we have polyphony of four channels. I'm using here the Bass Master Junior to sum this polyphony and spread it in the stereo field. So I'm just going to add some width here. Right, so we have four channels. We have polyphony of four voices. Another thing we have here is the offset input that we can use to transpose the sequence. So I have here the step sequencer from secret cell that I will use exactly for this. Right, so we have a bit more variation. Here I also have some chords. Again, I'm using uh, Aorus from the same collection, and I'm using here the It's Good Cholesterol from Bizet. It's, uh, in this case, a pitch-shifting delay. 
Right, and again I'm using polyphony, as you can see here, I have the four channels merged. So I get chords. I have here some drums and the bass, but before I unmute them, um, thank you again so so much for watching, please consider supporting the developers for their work. Cheers!